Is that tough? Oh my god! Oh, shrimp. Get my legs free, get to my butterfly. Okay? I want to work my way till I'm up on my hand, like I said. Okay? I want my head higher than his. I'm not quite there yet. So as I start to work my, my hips back, I don't even care if this inside leg is in front of him anymore. Okay? I'd like it to be, but maybe not. Maybe we want to enter into legs, whatever the situation. But if he's trying to keep his butt down so I don't butterfly sweep him, I can use that. So I'm laying on him. I pop myself up, kick my legs free. My hand, my free hand, the one that was on the ground, comes to his chin. I switch my shoulders. My other hand's on his tricep. Okay, so I'm in a good sprawl, and I'm pulling. My shoulder to the base of his spine. Yeah, it is. Okay. Base of his head, I guess. Whatever. Whatever this nape, nape, nape of his spine. There you go. Wherever you grab the cat, right? Okay, so I'm controlling that tricep, but I'm also pulling on it a little bit. If you guys want to get down this side. Okay. Once I get to the position, I'm pulling on it a little bit. Okay, the hand that's around his neck. We've got three different chokes from the front head position, three different basic chokes, four really, that kind of all tie together. Okay? If he's thinking, oh, he's going to guillotine me, he starts fighting my hand, I've got control of his elbow. Right? If he doesn't start addressing my hand, I can dive in for my guillotine. Okay? So, first one we're going to do here is I got elbow, I got chin, I'm going to punch through, lock my hands in a gable grip, and Squeeze my elbows together. Okay? Now I should be able to control with one arm right there. And keep that arm locked. What I want to do, I lock those hands. I'm going to slide up my arm, grab my tricep, and wipe my hand over his back. I'm trying to get my hand as tight underneath my chin as I can. If I can only get to his head initially, that's fine. Okay? But I'm locking the rear naked choke grip outside his shoulder here. Okay? We've got two different ways to finish the anaconda. The first one, the most common one, is a gator roll. I'm gonna dive my head into this gap as I wipe that hand tighter over my back. Pull him through, walk my hips to his, and I'm bending his arm, his head around my forearm as his shoulder is in the side of his neck. Okay? His go my goal is to get to his hips to keep him from running away. Because as long as he keeps this hand posted on my hip, he can keep walking away and stay safe. Does that make sense? So I'm getting my gable grip, squeezing the elbows together, slide up, wipe the back, gator roll. A lot of times a front head, I have a habit of dropping my outside knee, especially when I want to look for chokes. So I have to be aware that if he starts grabbing for that and reshooting the single, I've got to be able to sprawl on it. Okay, if you can do it from a good sprawl, that's fine. If you can do it from here, lock up your hands, great. I have a hard time with it. My brain just don't work that well. So I have a habit of dropping this inside knee to fight. I just gotta be aware that if he starts reaching for it to try to reshoot with his left hand, right? I gotta be ready to sprawl on it at any time. So I'm pulling that elbow across his neck, lock it up, dive my head, walk, 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 really fast. Yes? So all the way from the bottom, you get taken down, you get on top, you choke. One, two, three. 